Helldivers, the new cutting edge warbond is here, and that means it's time to check out another new weapon. Our mission is to find the best weapons in the game, but do any of the new offerings meet the needs of the modern Helldiver, and do any guns really rise to that occasion? My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're checking out the SG-8P Punisher Plasma. Now before we get too far into this, yes, I made a mistake in our recent video and said that the SG-8P Punisher Plasma was the first plasma weapon, and I was wrong. All the way on page 10 of the Helldivers Mobilized Warbond is the Plas-1 Scorcher, which is technically the first plasma-based weapon. Alright, with that out of the way, let's crack into the basics. The SG-8P Punisher Plasma is a shotgun, but it's unlike any other weapon in that category. It shoots out balls of plasma in an arc, and while I certainly get that the weapon looks the part of a shotgun, it subscribes to none of its doctrine. To unlock the Punisher Plasma, you'll need to first unlock the Cutting Edge Warbond, which costs 1,000 Super Credits. If you've been doing your missions and buying the Super Credits from the Helldivers Mobilized Warbond, you should have enough, but if not, you will have to make up the difference by buying Super Credits at the in-game store or get back to farming. The Punisher Plasma can be found on the second page of the Warbond and picked up for 60 medals. I actually find this entire pass to be very accessible, but as we'll discuss, sinking all of your medals into Cutting Edge might not be the best idea, at least for now. So let's break it down. The Punisher Plasma has a base damage of 100, a capacity of 8, recoil of 110, and a fire rate of 80. As always, looking at these numbers on paper means very little, but you'll also notice it's got the explosive weapon trait, which does become a factor. To be honest, none of those stats really matter all that much when it comes to this gun, because it performs so differently than almost everything else currently in Helldivers 2. As I mentioned in the intro, the Punisher Plasma shoots out balls of plasma in a gentle arc. It's far, far from a precision weapon, and at best is niche because of how situational it is. On a positive note, I actually had a bit of fun using the weapon. While playing with Livid and our buddy Mike, I found the gun to be unique, and sometimes it's not actually terrible. Does it compare to something like the Breaker or the new LAS-16 Sickle from a performance perspective? Absolutely not, but that doesn't mean it's not fun to use. Let's look at the gun's damage. It can kill most small enemies with one direct hit from a plasma ball. This is helpful on both the Terminid and Automaton front, and has the added bonus of also being able to kill a Scout Strider with a single direct hit. Larger enemies like Devastators, Berserkers, Spewers, and Brood Commanders can be killed with the weapon, but it does take multiple Plasma Balls to their face, and since hitting weak spots isn't exactly easy, you do feel that extra time it might take to bring down a priority target. As far as the damage goes, it does feel a bit undertuned. 100 base damage isn't great, and given that it's supposed to be an explosive weapon, it does feel like it punches just below its weight class. The rounds from the Punisher Plasma do have a small AoE, and at times, I did enjoy just sort of lobbing volleys of blue blobs down onto the heads of my enemies. This is actually when I found the gun to be the most enjoyable, because the stakes were so low. Judging the arc is also much easier when you're higher than the enemies, and you can take advantage of that slight AoE. As far as its capacity is concerned, this is where the Punisher Plasma really has an issue. Eight rounds is a paltry number, especially when you're talking about a low accuracy weapon. During small skirmishes, it usually takes one or two shots to dial in your accuracy, and then by the time you're comfortable, you're most likely ready for a reload. It's not a great balance, and I found myself having to either call for ammo or run a supply pack just to keep up with the ammo demands of the weapon. On paper, your ammo usage would be more efficient the more you use the weapon, but that's something you would develop over time. Luckily, you can count on the 12 total magazines for the Punisher Plasma, which is a bit of a saving grace. Not by much, but every mag matters. As for the gun's recoil and fire rate, I didn't find either to be that noticeable. I use the gun exclusively in third person because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use this type of weapon in first person, at least for my preferred playstyle, and I found it easy enough to manage. It's not a fast-firing weapon by any stretch, but you can pump out plasma ball after plasma ball with some consistency. Again, you run into the ammo issue very quickly, but that's just the nature of the beast. Let's now look at how the Punisher Plasma performs on both fronts of the war currently in the game. Like most weapons, you do have to change up your playstyle just a bit to match the challenges each faction presents, but that's pretty standard across the board. On the Terminid front, you do get a bit more bang for your buck in terms of the AoE damage, because there are hordes of enemies often stacked up, 
you can really rack up the kills just by simply firing into a crowd of bugs. I found myself trying to aim at the bigger enemies like brood commanders and spewers, and that seemed to be effective enough. The issue is the damage and the capacity. You simply cannot stand your ground with this weapon without using terrain for an advantage. Because the arc is difficult to judge, you'll need to keep enemies at a medium or even close distance without them getting too close, because the Punisher Plasma is complete garbage up close, mainly because on multiple occasions, I killed myself by misjudging the distance and blowing myself up. If you're super accurate, you can use the Punisher Plasma to shoot at the fleshy parts of enemies like spewers and even chargers, which does deal slightly over 100% damage because of the weapon's explosive trait. If that opportunity presents itself, awesome. But if not, I never found myself actively seeking it out because I was always wary of overextending myself and getting too close to enemies without a way to really bail myself out. On the automaton front, I think things were pretty much par for the course. I've come to the conclusion that you simply need to run the shield generator for pretty much every mission on this side, especially when using some of the less powerful weapons, but once I made that switch, I actually enjoyed the encounters. And yes, I also can't believe I'm saying that. As I said before, the gun can kill most weaker enemies in one hit, which is nice, but it can also handle some of the larger foes on this front. But that's only if you can get close enough to use the gun effectively without getting too close. As always, when fighting bots, cover is your best friend, and using the terrain and the various encampments to shield yourself from fire is a must. For those curious, you can use the Punisher Plasma to shoot at the vents of larger enemies like Hulks, but honestly, this is the least effective way to kill them. In combination with the new stun grenade, it is fun to lock bots in place, making it much easier to land your plasma shots, but ultimately, you have to ask yourself, is this the best way to actually get the job done? And the answer is no. As with all weapons, there are pros and cons, and in the case of the Punisher Plasma, I'm confident in saying that the cons outweigh the pros. Someone will find a use case for this weapon, but it just won't be a majority of the player base. No one would ever consider the Punisher Plasma to be powerful, and the lack of ammunition in a given magazine never feels like enough. It's frustrating because the gun itself is fun enough to use and feels unique compared to everything else in the game, but that alone doesn't dismiss its performance shortcomings. Another thing we haven't talked about is the sight picture, and I'm talking about that from a third-person perspective. Because of the way the camera adjusts as you aim your reticle higher, it's very challenging to gauge the distance of your shots. This was an issue I ran into constantly and became even more difficult when trying to shoot over terrain. Something is just off here and really limits your ability to use the gun effectively in certain situations. That being said, when you're above enemies, it's a ton of fun to use, and when the Punisher Plasma is at its absolute best. But even then, it's far from a standout weapon. In conclusion, the SG-8P Punisher Plasma is a fun weapon to mess around with, but in its current state will most likely not be the gun of choice for a huge chunk of the community. There are moments where it shines, like when you connect with a series of shots and you see multiple enemies crumble. But those moments are few and far between, and the low damage, restrictive magazine, and often cumbersome sight picture make the gun more of a burden than a boon. If it's not clear, no, the SG-8P Punisher Plasma is not now, and I can't really ever seeing it be the meta. But honestly, we don't care about that. As I said, I did have a bit of fun playing around with it, so if you have some medals to spare and you're looking for a slightly different Helldivers 2 experience, you can always give it a spin for yourself. Anyways, friends, let us know what you think about the SG-8P Punisher Plasma after going hands-on, and if it's a weapon, you'll be working in to your normal loadout. Of course, if you like this content and you want more Helldivers 2 in your feed, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, and consider subscribing. We've got more videos coming your way, so keep it right here. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.